What a lovely day. Your Z8 is today Z9. Welcome to Frames TM, to another video on Frames TM. Let me take you through some of the fundamental changes in the Z8. There are, I think, there are, I think, five or six big changes. And along with that, there are multiple minor, but very important changes made to the camera. And at this stage, I'll say two things. The significance about this firmware update tells you how aggressive Nikon is right now. They're not holding back, back anything. We are probably expecting more things to happen to the Z9. I think Z9 is going to get more update and maintain a difference between a gap between the Z8 and the Z9. So overall, it's a great news for both the Z9 owners and the Z8 owners. That's one observation. The second observation is that Nikon is differentiating the Z8 with something. Uh, what is that something it's the differentiation is happening vis-a-vis -vis the competition so i think uh, the sony's a93 right now has a tremendous tremendous competition i don't think the sony a93 really really uh compares to the z8 anymore except for fast action photography the a93 suddenly doesn't make much sense for most buyers the other differentiation is i think the camera that's going to join nikon stable and that's a Z63. So I think we're going to see two things. We're going to see a firmware update on the Z9 happening quite soon. And I think we're going to see a more news and conversation on the Z63. I think we are going to see an announcement from Nikon very, very soon. So with all that said, let's look at the Z8 uh, firmware updates. Now, much of these updates have actually happened on other cameras. Some of the stuff have happened to the Z9. Some of the things are already in the ZF. And there are things that are already the APS-C cameras. I'll just take you through that. We've now got pixel shift shooting. Okay, we saw that first on the ZF. Now it's on the Z8. Um, we have got that amazing bird autofocus system implemented in the Z8. I'm, by the way, shooting this with the Z8. And I haven't had time to actually upgrade it. This is just me discussing the firmware update with you. And I will get to the details of using the camera and finding out more about actual changes in the camera in the uh, next coming weeks. Okay, so the bird eye autofocus, the bird autofocus is, we have seen that uh, that change in algorithm made the Z9 the best autofocusing camera already uh, among in the market, especially when it comes to birds, birding and uh, wildlife. So you already had the animal detect autofocus and I have been shooting birding with that. Now the bird, uh, bird AF autofocus is just gonna be bird AF subject detection option is just going to be far more accurate, far more fast. Now, along with that, Nikon also says that there's going to be an improvement in the accuracy in all subject detection modes, including 3D, which means that if you're now shooting with the Z8 and shooting using uh, animal, animal autofocus, animal detection autofocus, human detection and eye detection autofocus or aeroplane or, uh, you know, Anything like that, every autofocus system has been improved and made more stickier. Let's move to video recording. In video recording, a couple of things have happened. The big thing is that, again, we have got the bird autofocus direction option added to video recording. Then you have auto capture. No, the auto capture uh, comes from, then you have the auto capture. And the auto capture comes from the Z9. It, first appeared in Z9, amazing, amazing capability added to the camera. Basically, you set up the camera somewhere and let uh, a bird or an animal come near to the camera and then the camera will actually detect motion and detect the subject and take a picture or a video. So auto capture will work in both photo and video. This is tremendous capability. Third, very important thing is that you, you now have low ISO sensitivity option added to the Z8 when you're shooting in end log. For example, when you're shooting outside, I've seen it happen to me a lot of times. You, your base ISO for end log is 800. Oftentimes it's too much. Like you have to use an ND and you know, it's just inconvenient at times. So now you have a low ISO sensitivity option there. It just makes the whole thing a little, little bit more convenient. Of course, you're going to lose a bit of dynamic range there, but the convenience of using it is, is tremendously high. You also have now the slow motion video recording added to it. You have seen that first in ZF. Apart from that, you also have the um, powered zoom function added to the ZF. And you have seen that happen to cameras like the Z30, 
first time in the Z30, then we got a firmware update for the Z50 and the ZFC. Now that feature has been added to the Z8. And the funny thing is that I didn't even know that the power zoom option is not available on the Z8. I didn't try it on the Z8. They have changed the video low capacity warning so that it is now displayed in white on red background when there is less than one minute of recording remaining. The warning is now also displayed when the recording is not in progress. So that's going to really help you plan your shoot. If you're, I don't know whether this is going to be, this is going to happen when the card is going to be full or um, the battery is going to die. But in either case, this is a really, really good feature because it's going to really save you from some hassle. You're just informed well in advance. Again, when AF area mode is set to 3D tracking and the human subject is large relative to the frame and multiple eyes are detected near the tracking focus point, the camera will assign priority to, for focusing to the eye closer to the point. So, which means let's say you have, you, you have a box assigned as an AF area mode, a small box, okay, and you see multiple subjects uh, within the frame, the person closest to the box, his or her eyes will be picked up. So these are, in my view, some of the very important significant changes made to the Z8, makes the camera far more usable, make the camera far more capable, of course. I honestly don't understand this. This is far more firmer too, okay, and uh, and Nikon did not wait for a firmer version 1.4 or 1.5. They just gave you the whole load and just opened up everything for the Z8 and suddenly I think your camera is now twice or thrice. I honestly think it's three times the camera right now. And apart from the battery uh, life, and I think the slightly better IBS in the Z9, I don't see how the Z9 is ahead of the Z8 right now. And therefore, I think there is going to be improvement made to the, made to the Z9. It's just crazy to imagine the kind of hardware power was actually packed in these bodies way back in 2022 when the Z9 was launched. And uh, I mean, Nikon really had planned all this out when they made the camera and they allowed the firmers to develop and then they kept pushing it out. It is a very, very exciting time for, to be a Nikon shooter right now. And, you know, I was watching this video a few days back where uh, I think Mark Wimmel, Wimmel, his name is, and he was, he does a lot of these, you know, uh, lens reviews. And he asked his audience, what cameras do you use? And he listed on the brands, he listed Sony, Canon, Fujifilm, Panasonic, and the fifth one was others. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. A lot of creators, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of photographers, a lot of filmmakers today who are using DSLR mirrorless style bodies. Actually, Nikon is not in their horizon. Nikon today is not in their consideration, unfortunately. And uh, I think the former two will change that. I think suddenly all this capability is going to be accessible to um, 4,000, in fact, less than 4,000 right now because of the 200 US dollars off running on the Z8. At 3,800 US dollars, the Z8 with this kind of body style, with this kind of capability, sturdiness, ergonomics, colors, IBIS, it is unbelievable. I am so glad that I put my bet on Nikon uh, because I just always felt that they had the right intentions, they had the right sort of plan, they're most prepared for the future with the large mount and the shallow mount. I think everything put together and their history of making really, really well-made study cameras, they are not compromising on that, mind you. They're not compromising on that, on that where we have seen, uh, you know, Canon actually move to plastic feeling bodies, even for the R5. And definitely Sony have done that for a long time now. And we've seen Fuji's quality uh, when, when it comes to body quality come down. So Nikon stands out uh, in oh. so many ways. And the Z8 is, it, it, it was bound to happen. This moment was about, had to come. And Nikon had said already that, you know, you are going to see a firmware update in the Z8 uh, early next year. They said it in 2023. And they fulfilled their promise. I'm so looking forward to what happens next to the Z9. I'm so looking forward to what happened next uh, in the Nikon lineup in terms of the Z6 III. And possibly there's going to be a Z8. I have done a video on what I think the Z80, sorry, Z80. I, 
I've done a video on what I think the Z80 should be. That video uh, will be linked. And uh, so definitely check that video out. And uh, let me know what you think of this update. Let me know how you're excited. Have you bought the Z8 or are you now thinking that you should go for the Z8? I think this is such a bargain right now for the capability it has. So that's where I'm going to leave it here today. And I'm going to see you soon with another video soon. Oh yeah, and subscribe if, doesn't, if it doesn't take anything away from you. Why didn't you support the channel and help me reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of February? I know it's difficult, but support.